next Sunday, come up to the Hope Centre after church, bring and share a meal, enjoy fellowship, hang out, hear some amazing testimonies, and then go on down to the Corby International Pool and watch them get dunked. So, that's next Sunday. Now, who's ever held money? Who's ever wished their money would go further than it actually does? Okay, cool. Grace, do you want some more money? This is a course for you. Now, last Sunday afternoon and this Sunday afternoon, we have got a CAP course running up at the Hope Centre. It's a Christians Against Poverty course, and basically it's a kind of opportunity to kind of get hope, try to get your finances in a better shape so that we can do more with what God's blessed us with for the people of Corby and the surrounding areas and so on. So if that's something that you would like to do, and pop along to the Hope Centre tonight from 7.30, it's a completely free course, but you get to learn about how to manage your money better and use it more wisely and all kinds of cool stuff. I very strongly recommend it. Now, does anyone know what's happening on the 29th of April? It's a Saturday. Adam, what do you know is happening on the 29th of April? Grace Turner. Hi, hands up if you know who Grace Turner is. Cool. Now, if... Oh, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. You've got 30 seconds, if you haven't got your hand up, to turn to someone who has got their hand up to hear a personal testimony about Grace Turner. So guys, talk to each other. Grace Turner, 30 seconds, go. Okay then. Now, 29th April, put it in your diary. It's going to be an amazing day where God's going to do some amazing things in our lives and we get to go and impact Corby and Kettering and everywhere else even more. So 29th of April, 29th of April, more information in your little update. Now, the offering is going to go around in just a moment. I don't know who's doing it, but someone's going to come around with it. Fantastic. Uh, the offering is an act of worship for those of us who call Hope Church our home church. So if you're visiting today, just pass it on by. Don't feel obliged you've got to put anything in. This is just us continuing with our worship as we were doing a few moments ago with the songs. And then on to my final little thing. And I wanted to share a kind of encouragement with you. It's kind of quite fitting, so thank you for that earlier. Now, last week in Yellow Group, which is uh, years reception one, two, so the little kids, not little, little, but little kids, we were studying various psalms. And uh, we actually wrote our own psalm. So I thought I would share yellow team psalm with you as kind of maybe to encourage you so this is what we wrote between us thank you god for africa earth the world my family diamond swords minecraft reference taking care of us dinosaurs apple pie trees that's a tree that grows apple pies, just in case you're not sure. Picking us back up when we fall down. Apples, sisters, normal trees, and my mum. And then we carried on, asking God to help us. So, please God, help us with stopping being naughty. Homework. Next one I don't necessarily agree with, but having more toys... Robots and writing. Amen. Now, I think, as you can probably agree, that is a pretty awesome prayer to be saying. Now, uh, that's what we came up with last week. And uh, I wanted just to share something with you that has kind of really blessed me today. We have got like a billion, I use the word like, it's not actually a billion, but like a billion kids with us today. And um, if you really would love to have an opportunity to perhaps your parent of someone who's in red or blue group. And maybe you want to see about what's going on in their spi uh, spiritual development on a Sunday so that you can help with your spiritual development with them during the week. If you'd like to hang out today, I need one more person to come up to red and blue group to hang out with them, to find out what's going on and see how they can bless the children there. So guys, I need someone for red or blue. I'm not moving until I get someone. And it can't be Ethan. Sorry, man. Any takers? Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. All right. I'm just going to pray for this offering, 
and then we are going to be going out, I believe. Yep. So, Lord God, I just say thank you for this offering. I thank you for the sacrifices that people have made to um, give their best to you here, Lord. I pray that you will give wisdom to those people who are going to be responsible for um, utilizing this for the kingdom. And I just want to say thank you, Lord, for the amazing privilege we have of meeting here today just to worship you. Lord, bless these children as we go out today and bless these teenagers as we go out. I pray that you will speak through their leaders of their groups and that we'll all have an amazing time and just, just love you even more at the end of today. Amen. Lovely. So, young people, children, you can go out carefully. Um, if uh, Just maybe turn to the people next to you, greet them in the name of Jesus, be welcoming and friendly, and take a few minutes to greet the people around you. Um, I'm going to invite Victoria to make her way up to the front because she's got a word of testimony that she wants to share. So we'll just give her a moment to get up here. She might be clapping a long way. She's a bit further back. <laughs> there, give chance. There's, there's a few parents probably coming back in as well from dropping off their children. Here she comes. You're all warm welcome. morning. It's good to have Victoria hug. Shall I just give you the microphone? Yeah. Hello, church. Um, just, I think I'll take about less than 10 minutes. I'll try to do it quickly. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all my fear is gone. Yes, I know, yes, I know he was my future. Life is worth for living just because he lives. Amen, church. Um, I just humble up myself. I'm standing here because of the grace of the Lord. The grace of the Lord is sufficient for us. He is an amazing God. He is a loving God. He loves us unconditional. Um, so many challenges they come they come to uh, everyone to nice people to bad people everybody gets ch some challenges uh, uh, last year as I was uh, looking forward for my birthday I got a challenge I had a challenge already which I was facing but another one came it was a big challenge but when, when God looks at those challenges they are too small for him because he, he, he can do amazing things because he's the owner of the universe. Um, my, my daughter and my son-in-law, they went on holiday. Six days before my, birth, my, my birthday, I, I got some news which were very bad. Uh, he's an amazing God because he says, be still and know I'm there. He is the Lord and he will never change today and tomorrow. What amazed me is that uh, he, he put people in, in the position of my family. Uh, I had a wonderful birthday. I had the elders of the church, amazing women and uh, men of God. And when I was facing those challenges, I had people who were working with me. What an amazing family we are. 
Um, I just want to give somebody encouragement today because uh, at times when th things are coming, we can't fix things on our own. I used to do that and I, w I used to get so helpless. But since I started to just leave things and to leave it to God, I just feel my life is back again. I just feel my life is back again. And when I got that news, it, it wasn't a, a very good news. It was very bad, but it, with God, everything goes well. And it went well. I just, thank, I just want to thank the uh, prayer team, uh, the elders of the church, and our pastors. Yeah, prayer is so powerful. It's so powerful, and the word of God is so powerful. And when you face a challenge, use the word of God, and then you pray. Then everything will go so. I just want to encourage somebody. If you're facing um, some challenges in your life, they'll overcome one day. Uh, there is the day uh, when I was just doing my grocery show, um, a list. I was doing my grocery list. What amazed me, uh, the Lord sent somebody with the things which I've written down. Everything which I've written down is an amazing God. Uh, I just, uh, just want to read some verses here. I just uh, humble myself in front of you saints. <coughs> Hello. I've got um, a verse which I want to share. It's in Acts 16. Um, it's about uh, Silas and Paul. Never cease to pray. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened. And everyone's bones were unfastened. When the jailer woke, and so the prison doors were open. He drew his sword and he was about to kill himself. Supposing the prisoners, he was thinking the prisoners escaped, but Paul cried with a loud voice, don't harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called the lights and rushed in and trembled with fear and fell down. Uh, I can encourage uh, saints when you go home to finish up the whole chapter because it did encourage me. Um, when we pray, something will happen. When we pray, something will happen. Uh, when, when the women and the men of God came to my house, something happened and it was broken down. He is an amazing God. I've seen the end of the Lord. He is an amazing God. He amazes me every day, every day of my life. Oh, he is a good God. I just want to thank uh, those who walk in prayers. Just keep on praying. Just keep on praying. The chains will be broken. We are blessed in this church. We are so much blessed. When we pray, something happens. When we pray, something happens. When you see somebody is jumping around and praising the Lord, don't judge. Because you had seen the end of the Lord. So that's what I was just thinking that I need to share with um, people of God. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Damian. Thank you, Sheila, David. Thank you. Thank you, the elders. You are amazing women and men of God. Thank you, church. Thank you, church. Things have been done in this church and they will come to happen. So let's we just keep on praying as Silas and Paul. They never ceased to pray. When they were in the jail, that's when they prayed more and praised more. When they were in the jail and everything was broken and the chain were broken down. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this woman of God. Lord, I thank you for her word of encouragement this morning. And Lord, we just, 
We just take that, Lord. When we pray, something happens. And Lord, I pray for anybody here who feels like they're in a prison in any way in their lives, feel like there's no way out right now, maybe struggling with illness in any way. Lord, we pray, Lord, that something will happen. We we join our prayers together. We thank you that amazing things are happening in this church. We thank you for the testimony of your goodness through through Victoria this morning. And Lord God, I pray, Lord, you'll minister to every person in this place. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that they will see breakthrough in their life, Lord. We lay our requests before you in Jesus' powerful name, Lord. Amen. Give her a round of applause. Um, just to say, there'll be no information desk afterwards because um, Louise is off poorly, so you can pray for her that she'll feel better, which will be good. We have a real treat this morning. We have Sue Arnold, who's going to be bringing the word of God to us. Yes. And um, she's going to be sharing, she's going to be continuing our Ephesians um, session, which started a series which started last week. And I'm expectant, I know that she is. Shall I pray for you? Yes, she's all ready. Lord God, I thank you that you have spoken into, into Sue's life this morning. And Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you give her boldness and courage, Lord, as she brings your word to us today. Lord, we pray for our hearts that they'll be open to what you want to say to us. Lord, where you want to bring your healing. Lord Jesus, where you want to bring your release in our lives. Lord, we pray that the word will just cut through to our, to our very hearts. And, and Lord God, that you will... You'll move us from where we are right now to where you want us to be through your word this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Is that me on? <laughs> cool. Right. I want to have the head mic so I can wave my arms around while I speak because that's the way I do it. <laughs> so I'm really feeling very privileged to be here, you know, privileged by the Lord, and I'm really excited about this. But I'm. Um, I don't know if anybody else, has anybody else had a pooey week? I've had a really pooey couple of weeks because I got my knickers in a twist about standing up here and doing this. And it just reminded me that this is such a spiritual battle. We're right in a spiritual battle. So I just want to say, if while I'm speaking, you feel any offence rising up, you feel any guilt that you haven't done or haven't been or whatever, any shame or any sense of, oh, it's not for me, kick that out. That is a lie. And the truth is that you are loved and chosen. So that's what we're going on. So I'm going to start with my favourite prayer in the Bible. So, and then get into this. So, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. How amazing is that? We get God. So, let's get into my text this morning, dearly beloved. Is Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 6, So it's, uh, which says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Christ Jesus in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. So, oh good, it's up there. Thank you, Andy. Um, Gina also did me a PowerPoint, but it's gone berserk, so we'll just have to do it without it. Sorry, chap. But anyway, so let's look at this verse by verse, and then I've got some other bits to say. Oh, I haven't got my time thingy, so I don't bore you all to death. Um, which way up does it go? It's a conventional watch. I don't know what's happening. 
Yeah, thank you. <laughs> right, so this first verse, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. I used to read that verse with a certain amount of frustration. I mean, I got that it, the spiritual blessings were the best blessings that we could get. The spiritual blessings, the things that go into our heart and soul and spirit that come straight in from the Holy Spirit. That's what I wanted. I really wanted those spiritual blessings. But what were they? And why were they in the heavenly realms when actually I needed them now, here with me on earth? So I was just like, what? But then, praise the Lord, he turned the little light on for me and I understood that, of course, we want these blessings in the heavenly realms because that's the eternal realms. We don't want them just for here, now on earth. We want them forever into eternity. So it's good they're in the heavenly realms. And, of course, actually, we have access to the heavenly realms now. Ephesians 2, 6 tells us that we are seated in Christ in the heavenly realms. We can pull those blessings down now. We have access to them now. And what are those blessings? Fantastic. When the light went on, the blessings are, of course, what the next 11 verses tell us. They are Incredible. I don't have enough words to describe them. So verse 4 says, For he, he, as in the God that we're praising, chose us in him, Jesus Christ, before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. People, why are we not somersaulting around the room, shrieking our heads off? That is amazing. You have been chosen by God. God himself, the creator of the universe, who didn't even have to shout to create the world. He just spoke. And the universe came into being. And he has chosen you, the author of life. The light himself, love himself, has chosen you. The final judge, the one whose word counts above everything else. doesn't matter what anybody else says. He has chosen you. So, and right back before your great, 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 great granny with a twinkle in her great, great granny's eyes, before the beginning of everything and anything, he looked down the tunnel of time and he could have said, oh my goodness, that is going to be a disaster. But he didn't. He looked down that tunnel of time and he saw you and said, wow. She needs me. He needs me. I'm going. He chose before the creation of the world. I love this, that the gospel is not plan B. It's not like he set the world off and thought, oh, oh that's all gone a bit pear-shaped, hasn't it? I'd better do something about it. He'd already decided, he already knew it was going to go pear-shaped. And he decided that we were worth coming for. We were worth dying for. That is amazing. So, and he hasn't just chosen like a group of people. So like, oh, I'll have that lot out of Corby and that lot out of Manchester and, oh, there's a few over there I'll have. He hasn't chosen a great swathe of people. He has chosen you individually. And I could, I could never quite get my head around this. How could God have chosen individuals when there's so many of us and there's one God you know how does that work because God is not like us he's infinite I'm limited by my boundaries aren't I I don't even know all of you here and you know there's quite a lot more of people in the world than there are here but God is infinite infinity is how it works so the more people there are the more God there is coming at us isn't there he has no boundaries. And of course, Jesus told us in Luke 12 that he knows the number of hairs on our heads. He knows us individually. Sorry, uh, Mark, I'm going to pinch something of water because my mouth's really dry. Sorry. We have brothers and sisters here. We can share germs. Thank you. So, and 
my favourite psalm, Psalm 139. I love it because it talks so much about the Lord knowing us individually. I just love those first three verses where he says, I know what you're like. I'm familiar with all your ways. You know, he knows exactly who I am. He knows exactly who you are. So it is no accident that you are here listening to this woman this morning. It's no accident you are here because you have been and are being called by the God of the whole universe who knows your name. So, you are not a mistake. You are not unwanted. Even if you are illegitimate, the product of rape, unwanted by your parents, you are, that is not who you are. You are wanted and chosen by the Lord. Oh, by the way, when my, uh, the title of my talk is Our Identity in Christ, just in case you haven't kind of caught me on. Sorry. Sorry. You, and nobody, nobody has slipped in here under the radar. It's not like the, the Lord's like, oh, oh, that one got in. I didn't notice they were coming. Hadn't realised they were in. Oh, I didn't recognise that one. That is not whatever happened. Verse 8 of this chapter tells us that he lavished his grace on us with all wisdom and understanding. Nobody has slipped in under the radar. Whatever you think you are like, you have not slipped under the radar. Whatever you think of yourself, you might think that you were made too ugly, too stupid, too short, too fat, too tall. You haven't got enough of this. You should be more like that. Whatever you think of yourself, you are chosen. So you better ask the Lord what he thinks about you. Thank you. Because that's the truth. Not those thoughts that tell you you've got it wrong and you're not enough or you're too much. It's what he thinks about you because he has chosen you. So if you struggle with self-worth, you do not need more self-esteem. You need more God-esteem. He does not make mistakes. And you have to remind yourself of this all the time. As I say, this is a spiritual battle. We have an enemy of our soul who does not want us to get this truth. So remind yourself of this truth all the time. When I started to get into grips with this, you might have seen me walking up the road actually doing this. Because I picture it like I'm walking in this direction, but I have all these doors coming into my mind that the enemy shoves thoughts in and other people perhaps shove thoughts in. And I just have to keep going towards the Lord, slamming those doors as I go. I don't have to go there. I don't have to go there. I don't have to go there. Because God the but of God. Yes, that might be true, but God. But God sorts me out. But God loves me. So we have, to, we have to train ourselves in this spiritual warfare. So what you need is God esteem and remind yourself of all that stuff, that wonderful stuff. Thank you, Jenny and Co., that we sang about this morning and that uh, Victoria shared about and Valapi shared about. So, so um we are, it's just too amazing because, you, yes, you might be a bit rubbish at some things, but God made you as you are, and you have, if you have given your life to him, he has given his life back to you. You have God on the inside. It's like being a TARDIS. You're bigger on the inside than you are on the outside, isn't it? In that amazing passage, in, um, at, towards the end of John where Jesus is praying for his disciples just before he goes to the cross. And in John 17, he says this amazing thing, my prayer is not for them, as in the, the immediate disciples with him alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Who's that? Who's that? Yay! So... That, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me. How incredible is that? That they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. 
How amazing is that? We have God on the inside. You are not what your negative thoughts or what the things that are spoken over you have been told. You are of God. And if we find if we find this a battle, it was hard for Jesus too, wasn't it? But God thought you were worth it. He sacrificed his son, verse 7 tells us it's through his blood that we have all this blessing. So when the Lord came and chose us, it wasn't just like picking daisies. It was costly, but he knew that you were worth it. That's amazing. God thought I was worth coming and dying for, being a man. You know, for 30 years, here's God, born a baby and doing all this stuff. And everybody's like, mm, don't think much of you. Oh, I don't like what you're saying. Oh, you're a bit of a nutter. You know, and he never said, excuse me, <coughs> you know, it's God here. You know, that's amazing. He struggled with all that before he died. And amazingly, when he chose to become a man for our sake, he was a man forever. He didn't go back up to heaven and suddenly not be a man. He is a man forever and he chose to do that because he thought you were worth it, worth that cost. So, you haven't just been chosen. You've been chosen to be holy and blameless, which is just fantastic. I love it. I have been chosen to be like God. I'm going to end up looking like God. How incredible is that? I'm so excited about that. Because holiness isn't something boring and staid and, you know, kind of grim. It's just full of joy and love. It's full of God. And holiness is God's stamp on us. It's his mark by which he says, this person belongs to me. It is God writing his name on his property. And his name is the likeness of his character. How amazing is that? I'm really excited about that. So when he chose us in love, he didn't just chose us because he had to. Somebody had to do something about this. He chose us in love because he loves us. And this love is so amazing. It's an unconditional love. He decided before you were born that he was going to choose you. So you did nothing to earn it. You can do nothing to earn it. It is not dependent on your performance. And it isn't, doesn't change according to how you live. He loves you because he is love. And that's just what he does. And you are chosen. So even in his discipline and in the hardships we struggle with, there is his love. We have to just keep focused on it and remind ourselves about his unconditional love. I just love that. It's not dependent on me and all those things that bother me about myself. So verse 5 says, He is predestined to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. My version says pleasure and will, but there are, I think the King James says good pleasure and will. I like that. Good pleasure. It was his good pleasure that he chose us. He wanted us. He wanted to bring us into his family. How amazing is that? Sorry, I keep saying how amazing is that, but I'm just so amazed by that, that the Lord wanted to bring me into his family. And he decided before the beginning of time, I was predestined, you were predestined. That's pretty funky. I'm not going to get into predestination and uh, free will. Fortunately, somebody else is going to deal with that another time. <laughs> So that's cool, but it's, it doesn't matter that we don't understand. God's too big for us to understand. It's fine. All we need to know is that he wanted to bring us into, our, into his family. We're not just chosen. He is besotted with us. Verses 13 and 14 talk about us being sealed and marked with the Holy Spirit, this promise that we have, this Holy Spirit in us. It's a bit like, I hope this isn't irre irreverent, the Holy Spirit is almost like our engagement ring. 
you know, how amazing is that? We are engaged to God, you know, because he is besotted with us. And uh, Hebrews 2.11 tells us that Jesus is not ashamed to call us brother. You know, sometimes we're ashamed of ourselves, but he's never ashamed of us. He's always looking at us in love. He's always looking at us in love because he knows who he is. He knows he's big enough to cover all the mistakes and all the rubbish we do. And he chills with it. And um, one of the amazing things about being adopted as sons is apparently in Roman law, when they adopted people as adults, and when they were adopted... They couldn't undo that. They couldn't disinherit an adopted child. That was it. It was irrevocable. And that's the same for us. His choice of us is irrevocable. He is not going to change his mind and think, well, she's really messed it up this time. Out. No. Because he can cover it. He has covered it on the cross. He chose to cover that for me and for you, and he is not going to change his mind. This changes everything for us. We've been moved from the one kingdom, the kingdom of the world, the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of light. We have been brought into the family of God. It changes everything. We are not who we used to be. We have been included in his eternal plan. That's amazing. Verse 6. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. So his eternal plan is that he gets this amazing glory. that Everybody sees his splendor because he's so amazing. It's not a big, he's not like showing off. It's just, it's the best for everybody in the whole universe to see his splendor because he is light, because he is glory, because he is joy, because he is love. We need to see it. Everybody needs to see it. We need him. And we have been included in that plan. Isn't that amazing? So, to, so we've been included because he wants to be glorified through us. I just love that, that the Lord wants to be glorified through me. That is just phenomenal, isn't it? You know, this little bit of earth and clay and neurosis, the Lord is going to be glorified through me, through you. I have been given an eternal purpose. And certainly for me, the more I see of that, the more I want to obey him. I want to get on board with the plan. I want to glorify him. So, and this again has been freely given, not because I did anything to earn it or you did anything to earn it. It's been given unconditionally and freely. So, think about that for a minute. We'll have a glass of bubble tea later. So, guys, why am I a bit overexcited about this? Why is it so important? It's because it's God's plan. It's important because it's his purpose and his praise. And it's really important as well because if we don't get this, if we do not understand who we are in Christ, if we don't know who God is and therefore who we are, then we are living wonky. We are missing out on that abundant life that God has promised. We are living wonky and we are being ineffective in the world. Sorry, but we are. Unless we understand this and live out of this place of I know who my father is and therefore who I am, we are just not going to be effective in the world. We'll still be loved. We will still be saved. But we will not be living up into the staggering privileges that God has given us. That really skewered me when yesterday I was writing this out again in big writing so I could read it easily as I was flapping my arms about. It's just like the Lord was just like, yes, Sue, and um, do you live up to that? Do you grab hold of everything that I've given you? Do you, are you bold about it? I'm like, okay, no, I'm not, but I'm going to have to start living up to it. So, okay, people, you, I'm accountable now. You need to start challenging me. Am I living up to 
what he's given me and who I am. I love the beginning of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1, 2. Um, Paul describes, oh my little bit of paper has disappeared. No, that's not what Paul describes. He says, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy. So he says they're already sanctified. It's done. Jesus has sanctified them by dying on the cross and rising again. But they are also called to be holy. So we have to kind of live up into it. We just turn to the Lord and cooperate with him and live out of this place. The one condition of being holy, of living out of this place, is that we know who we are and who we serve. And that we carry this consciousness of him and who we are and of belonging to him, absolutely belonging to him into every corner of our lives and the lives of those we touch. And we recognize his presence with us all the time, in us all the time, seeking to do his will. That's all we need to do is know who we are, well, who he is, and therefore who he, we are. It's the only way to do life. There's a, a fantastic analogy of this in Freedom in Christ, which I love so much, where it, um, whatever his name is that does the video says that if you, if you were a prostitute in a certain country and the king of the country came to you and said, um, we know you've been a prostitute, but it's okay, we're wiping out all the... the charges against you and you know you're completely forgiven that would be great wouldn't it it'd be really nice to have th that assurance and you would feel good about it and relieved and what have you but the problem would be is that you'd still be dressed in your prostitute clothes wouldn't you and you'd still live in the same place amongst the same people and you would still learn need to earn a living but if the king comes to you and says I know you've been a prostitute but I love you and I'm wiping out all the charges and I'm going to marry you. That changes everything, doesn't it? You have queen's clothes, you live in the palace, you have someone that loves you and it is, is pretty inappropriate for a queen to behave like a prostitute. It changes everything and that is what has happened to us. So how do we get into this place where we're living out of knowing who the Lord is and who we are? Well, first of all, we have to ask the Lord, don't we? We just say, Lord, give me this revelation. Give me the knowledge of this. Help me to understand it. We have to spend time with him, praying and praising. We have to really feed on the truth, read the Bible, um, have fellowship with other people, join a life group where you can fellowship with others and they can help to feed you. Jo come and join us to celebrate recovery on Friday nights. If you're struggling with life, we will help you walk through this. And that's what Celebrate Recovery is all about, learning to walk in who you are in Christ. Feed yourself at home. I love watching, my, uh, listening to Mike Bickle, John Piper, um, other people on the internet. Obviously, you need to be discerning about who you're listening to. Read books. Read the Bible most, but read books. I've got this great um, book here, which I found on somebody else's shelf, and I started reading it. I thought, wow, this is great. I said, oh, can I borrow your book? And she said, oh, you can have it. I've read it twice since I acquired it. It's um, Martin Lloyd-Jones, who was a preacher in the middle of the last century. He was quite a famous preacher. And it's, great. it's called Fellowship with God. You can buy it on Amazon. I checked yesterday for a penny, plus £2.80 um, postage. But it's worth it. Look, let me read you this little bit about it. Have I got time to read? Thank you. I've got my, my checker here. So listen to this. Now, this is absolutely basic and fundamental. Christians, according to this teaching, so that he's preaching on the first letter of John, are those who are called out of and delivered from this present evil world. Those who have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and who have taken out, been taken out of the dominion of Satan 
and translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. There is no question about it. That is what has happened to them. That is what makes them Christians and they know it. They are able to say, I am aware of this life that is beyond me and within me and I ascribe it only and entirely to the grace of God in Christ Jesus. They are aware not only of a difference between the world that does not believe in Christ and themselves, but also of the difference between what they were before and what they are now. They can say, though I am amazed and astounded when I consider the sins I have committed and all my unworthiness, I know, in spite of it all, that I am of God. God has had mercy upon me and has worked in me the miracle of rebirth. I just love that. Does not ram that truth down into your soul. That's the kind of thing we need to be reading and and obviously the amazing truth. You need to feed on the truth. So, and you need to remember that it is a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle every day for us. But that's fine. We're on the winning side. I had an incident of this recently where a few months ago um, Sylvia sent round an email to the ladies' life group just saying how much she appreciated us all as individuals in the life group. And as I was reading it, I heard this voice say, yeah, but it doesn't apply to me. And what was amazing about that was that I heard it because I've had those voices all my life. But I heard it and I was able to get hold of it and chuck it out. That's what we need to do all the time. Get hold of those things and chuck them out. There's, um, uh, there's a verse somewhere, and I can't remember where it is. I did write it down, but I've lost my place, so that's okay. Where, where Paul talks about taking hold of all the, the arguments. Where is it? Yes, absolutely. That's what we do. Take all those thoughts that come in against the truth and kick them out. You do not have to have them. So, it's a spiritual battle, but you're on the winning side. So, finally, what does this life lived out of this place of God is good, God is almighty, God is amazing, he loves me and therefore I am of God. What does it look like? Well, it looks very secure. It's not blown about by our circumstances, by what people think of us, by illness or anything. We are secure and because we're secure, we're able to focus on the Lord. And that makes us effective. That great verse that Damien talked about last week, about where Paul, right at the beginning of this letter, says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. That is an extraordinary claim, isn't it? You know, I am who I am by the will of God. That is an outrageous, if that wasn't true, that would be outrageous, wouldn't it? But it is the truth. You are who you are by the will of God. So we need to focus on that. And we are not orphans. Gina, as I said, done this big PowerPoint for me that I was going to flick on now. This little Roman soldier with a great big Roman soldier behind him. That's us. We have God backing us up. We have all the resources of heaven backing us up. We are not orphans. We are loved children with all that that means. So, don't waste time and energy on what other people think of you. I mean, we've got to love each other, haven't we, and not wind each other up. But if somebody doesn't like you, you need to think, okay, what is there that I need to deal with? But actually, it's their problem. You know, we don't have to be. I didn't need to spend so much time and energy getting my knickers in a twist thinking, oh, no. What if I'm terrible on Sunday? You know, if I'm crashing and burning here, it's fine. The Lord still loves me. I am still his daughter. It's okay. And 
I don't have to worry about, you do not have to worry about your sin anymore. It's dealt with. Jesus said, um, I think Jenny said, or somebody said, it, the lassie or something, it is done. It's finished with. God knew I was going to do that horrible thing, that I was going to be a rat bag to Giles or vile to Jennifer or not a very understanding mother or whatever it is. When he chose me, it was, it's not a surprise to him that next week I'm going to do something useless. He's not going to be like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, should I have chosen her? Mm, not sure, really. That is not what it's like, is it? He, he knew beforehand and still chose me. So we don't need to worry about it. I mean, we need to repent, but repentance is just turning around to our Father and saying, you were right. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have behaved like that. You were right. We don't need to spend hours and lots of energy beating ourselves up by it. Guilt is never from the Lord. It's always from the enemy. Kick it out. So, also it means that we can forgive other people. Because we have all the resources of heaven behind us, because we have a loving Father, we can afford to extend grace to each other, can't we? We don't have to take offence. If somebody does something that we don't like, we perhaps need to think, well, okay, what's bugging them? How can I pray for them? We don't have to be all defensive and protect ourselves because the Lord is our defender. Let us not waste all that blooming energy because we have somebody that's doing it far better than we could do it ourselves. We do not have to justify ourselves. This is a very silly little example, but recently um, I, I got up and I was emailing something urgently to Emily and so I was still in my pyjamas and dressing gown and a friend of mine arrived to give me something and she works really hard. She commutes to London every day and she's always on the go and she works really hard. She was up and dressed and ready to go and I'm still in my pyjamas and dressing gown. I felt really awkward because I thought, oh no, Chintia, she's so wonderful and she's so busy and here I am slobbing about in my... And she texted me a bit later about something else. I was really tempted to text back and say, oh, I was only in my pyjamas because blah, 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 blah. And I thought, no, I don't have to. I do not have to justify myself because God knows why I was in my pyjamas. And he's cool about it. So I don't need to justify myself to anybody else. And I don't need to worry about the future because he's got it, and my worrying is not going to change anything anyway. Um, again, my favorite Psalm 139 and verse 16 says, All the days of my life were known to God. He knows. He's got it. He's quite able and willing to handle all this stuff that I can't see and I can't handle anyway. We don't need to waste time on that. So we're not orphans. We can stand tall and stop wasting energy. But of course this cuts both ways. If I am chosen by God, then so are you. And if you are chosen by God, then the person next to you, that really irritating person, they were chosen by God too. So... If you need to respect the Lord's choice of you, you also need to respect his choice of them as well. And um, Colossians 3.12, this is such a great little passage. 12 to 14 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, so that's who you are and that's who you do this out of, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You can afford to do it because you've got heaven. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as God forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. You can do that because you've got God. And if that person next to you who actually just isn't, you know, isn't quite up to it, has been elevated, 
or they've got some gifts that you haven't got, do you know what? That's fine. It's absolutely fine because God still has a plan for you. He's not run out of blessings. Um, one of my, my lovely, much-loved, dear friend and mentor, Heidi Geswend, always used to pray for people, Lord, bless them more than you bless me. I'm like, what? Until, of course, I got the infinity thing. He doesn't run out of blessings. Just because you're blessed, it's not like, oh, sorry, Sue, um, I've used it all up today. You can't have any blessings. No, the more blessings there are, the more blessings there are coming, aren't there? He never runs out of blessings. He's infinite and amazing. So I do not need to bolster my ego up by putting you down because I know who I am and actually I know who you are as well. So, 